lichen planus. The definition of lichen planus goes like this. It is an idiopathic chronic inflammatory disease affecting the skin, mucous membranes and the appendages. So, it's a chronic inflammatory disease affecting these structures. Little bit about the origin of lichen planus. It was described originally by von Hebra who called it lichen ruber. Erasmus Wilson named it lichen planus in 1869. Lichen means tree moss and planus means flat in Greek. Lichen planus is a Greek word wherein lichen means tree moss and planus means flat. Next we'll talk about the epidemiology of lichen planus. The frequency of lichen planus is 1 to 4 percent. Females are most commonly affected than males here and the most common age group that we see lichen planus is more than 45 years. Children are also affected in lichen planus to up to 1 to 4 percent and usually children have positive family history. HLA alleles associated are HLA A3, HLA BW35, HLA B8 and B16. So these are the epidemiological factors. Etopathogenesis of lichen planus. Here we have certain theories here. Firstly, we have autoimmune theory which says that there is association of lichen planus with other autoimmune diseases like ulcerative colitis, myasthenia gravis, lupus erythematosus, alopecia areata and diabetes mellitus. Secondly, there is a role of T cells, CD4+, plus, CD8+, plus, and T helper 17 cells which play a role in pathogenesis. These T cells induces the production of chemokines and cytokines which upregulate the local inflammatory mediators and cause LP. Infections and vaccinations. Hepatitis B and hepatitis C is known to cause lichen planus and also certain vaccines like killed influenza vaccine, measles, mumps, rubella, MMR vaccine, diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, DPT vaccine is known to cause LP. This is the etiopathogenesis of lichen planus. This is the identification of a new antigen. This new antigen in the epidermis can be a self-peptide or it can be a systemic drug or it can be induced by systemic drug or by contact allergens or mechanical trauma and infection. This new antigen is processed by the antigen presenting cell in the epidermis and it is presented to the T cells. So these T cells, mostly the T helper cells will be activated and they produce interferon gamma. Interferon gamma will increase the expression of ICAM on the keratinocytes. ICAM is a ligand for beta 2 integrin which is present on the T cells. So there is an in interaction or a link established between the keratinocytes and the T cells which bring about the pathogenesis and here it causes band like inflammatory infiltrate at the dermoepidermal junction. Also there is an activated CD8 plus T cells and also which undergo clonal proliferation. These along with NK cells bring about the keratinocyte necrosis. The keratinocyte necrosis happens by two pathways. Ultimately, it is a keratinocell necrosis which basically causes LP. Here, there will be after the activation of CD8 plus T cells, there will be cross-linking of fast ligand on cytotoxic T cells and a death receptor which is fast on the keratinocyte. So, on the keratinocyte, there will be fast. On the T lymphocytes, there will be a fast ligand. So, there will be the cross-linking of these which causes activation of proteolytic enzyme cascade causing target cell that is keratinocyte apoptosis and lysis forming colloid bodies. Colloid bodies or civet bodies are nothing but the degenerated keratinocytes. And also, the second mechanism of apoptosis is by cytotoxic molecule release such as perforins and granzymes. These perforins induces hole in the host cell membrane and granzyme causes a direct cytotoxic effect on the keratinocyte. Together, they lead to colloid body formation. Also, there is basement membrane disruption and subepidermal cleft formation in LP. So, certain drugs which cause LP are heavy metals like gold salts, mercury, arsenic and antimonials. Antimonials like mepacrin, quinine, quinidine. Antibiotics like tetracycline, demiclocycline. Anti-TB drugs like streptomycin, isoniazid and pyrazinamide. Diuretics like furosemide. Antihypertensives like beta blockers, AC inhibitors and calcium channel blockers, anticonvulsants, NSAIDs, oral hypoglycemic drugs, antihistaminics, lipid lowering drugs like pravastatin, simvastatin, certain miscellaneous drugs like alendronate, allopurinol, diazoxide, 5-fluoroacyl. Clinical features of lichen planus. Here we see pruritic, flat topped, polygonal. For violations, we can remember it as purplish papules and plaques. So, there are certain P's here that we have to remember. So, P is that, that, that you have to remember in clinical features. So, there are pruritic lesions, they are flat topped. You can remember it as flat topped. Just to remember it. So, there are flat topped polygonal lesions, violations or purplish papules and plaques are present. So, this is a characteristic lesion of lichen planus here. 
There's something called as Wickham striae, which is seen on the lesions of lichen planus. They're nothing but delicate radiating white scales on the surface of the lesions. They correspond to histological feature of focal hypergranulosis. So there is focal hypergranulosis seen in the histopathology of these lesions. And it is appreciated after application of water or oil over the lesion. It is well appreciated. And also in LP, we have the presence of Cobner's phenomenon, which is seen. Cobner's phenomenon is also called as isomorphic phenomenon. Here, there will be occurrence of lesions at the site of trauma. So, if, if there is a lesion here and if you scratch here, there will be lesions. Similar lesions will appear here also wherever you have scratched. And that phenomenon is called Cobner's phenomenon. That is also seen in lichen planus. The commonly involved sites are the flexors of wrist and forearm, dorsal surface of hands, anterior aspect of legs, neck and lower back. Certain variants of lichen planus according to how they look and how they present. We have hypertrophic LP, atrophic LP, annular LP, bullous LP, lichen plano pilaris, which is the follicular LP. This is lichen plano pilaris, commonly seen over the scalp, otherwise follicular LP. We have lichen planus pemphigoides, actinic LP mostly seen on the sun exposed sites and linear LP. We have also erosive LP, eruptive LP, inverse LP. Inverse LP is it is seen on the other sites. Other sites other than the normally involved sites are involved here. That is inverse LP, nail LP, oral LP, genital LP, mucosal LP, esophageal LP. So th these are the types of variants of LP. So this is a characteristic hypertrophic LP here. So this is a hypertrophic LP lesion. You can see the Wickham stry on the lesion as well. Here is the annular LP seen on the glands. So this is LP pemphigoides. We have actinic LP here which is seen on the face and the dorsum of the hands. This is the annular lesions here. This is LP pigmentosis. Different variants of LP. So here is the scale, slate blue pigmentation, slate grey pigmentation is seen all over the chest. This is LPP which is lichen, lichen plano pilaris. You can see the follicular lesions here. So lesions are the hyperkeratosis seen only where the follicles are there. So this is the oral LP. You can see the mucosa here. They see pattern, reticulate pattern is seen. Here also you can see the lesions. This is genital LP. Here you can see here the violaceous lesions. Certain complications of LP are post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is seen. They heal, the lesions heal with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. In nail LP, they can cause dystrophic nails and also loss of nails, anonychia. And if, if the lesions are there on the scalp, which is like in plano pilaris, that can cause scarring alopecia. There will be cicatricial alopecia seen. And on the feet, if the LP is present for a long time, it can cause deformities. Malignant transformation in cases of long-standing lichen planus, we have malignant transformation, which also has been seen. Associations, other autoimmune diseases are associated. Like we have alopecia areata, lichen sclerosis, vitiligo, DLE, HCV infection, thymoma, ulcerative colitis, diabetes mellitus, psychosocial stress. Histopathology of lichen planus is very characteristic and helps us in the diagnosis of lichen planus. Histopathological features are compact hyperkeratosis. We can see the hyperkeratosis here. There will be compact hyperkeratosis. Wedge-shaped hypergranulosis will be seen. Irregular acanthosis. Saw toothing of the rate is just seen here. Along with that, we have vacular degeneration of the basement membrane or the basal layer. Then we have band-like inflammatory infiltrate present at the dermo-epidermal junction. Also, as mentioned before, we have civet or colloid bodies are seen. These are nothing but the degenerated keratinocytes present at the dermoepidermal junction. Also, there is another feature called as Max Joseph space, which is seen. Max Joseph space is nothing but a separation between, there will be a separation seen between the epidermis and the dermis at the dermoepidermal junction. That is Max Joseph space, which is seen. That is because of the interface inflammation, interface dermatitis that we see here. Also, another important uh, investigation would be uh, direct immunofluorescence, which can help in diagnosis. It shows ragged and shaggy fibrin base membrane zone along with uh, globular deposition of colloid bodies and immune complexes. Differential diagnosis depends upon the type of lichen planus. In hypertrophic LP, differentials can be prurigo nodularis. 
lichen simplex chronicus and warts in atrophic lp it can be lichen sclerosus et atrophicus and morphia in annular lp it can be granuloma annulare in oral lp it can be leukoplakia and oral pemphigus lichen planus of the nails should be differentiated from onychomycosis alopecia areata and nail psoriasis Treatment of lichen planus first line therapy would be using uh, topical corticosteroids can be used again to relieve itching you can use first generation antihistaminics intralesional steroids can be given in case of hypertrophic lp nail lp and erosive lp in uh, also immunomodulators can be used like tacrolimus famicrolimus and topical minoxidil is mostly used in lichen plano pilaris second line therapy would be using systemic corticosteroids both orally and intramuscularly oral retinoids acetretin can be used phototherapy can be given narrow band uvb therapy pua or bath pua can be used As a third line therapy, we have immunosuppressive agents present like azathioprine, methotrexate, cyclophosphamide, cyclosporin, and mycophenolic mofetil. Hydroxychloroquine can be given in cases of lichen planus pilaris. So this is the management of lichen planus.